Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, it started now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 24. Barnabas he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord, it says. And uh, so, uh, here we see that uh, the same qualifications which the people who were actually chosen um, to serve in the church, you know, they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they're full of the Holy Spirit, and they were people of faith. Okay, just like Stephen, Philip, and the others, you know, Prochorus and the others. So here it talks about Barnabas having the same qualifications. Okay? And if you go down further, it talks about another man, right? Uh, his name is Agabus, verse 28. And he says, Agabus stood up and showed by the Holy Spirit there was, there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Okay, so and then what happens is they decide to send some help to those people who are who will be affected by the famine. Okay, famine means there's nothing is growing, there's no rain. Um, uh, you know, so um, well. Drought is the thing when we say we don't have any rain, but famine is nothing productive is happening. The crops are not growing. So, so there was such a condition. And Agabus was a person who, by the Spirit of the Lord, right, which means because of the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who knew, knows everything conveyed about this famine to Agabus. Okay? So in the Old Testament, you know, we see something similar about a famine that is about to come to the land. And the Holy Spirit tells about that, gives that information. Do you remember where? When we were studying about the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we actually read about that. You remember? No? Online students? Okay, Sanjay says, uh, Joseph's dream, that's correct, right? So, uh, well, it, it is actually a dream which the Pharaoh had, okay? Uh, and Joseph actually interpreted that. He tells him about the dream and the interpretation, but it's actually a dream which um, the Pharaoh had. In fact, God was speaking to that uh, king who, who did not know him who did not, you know, he was a pagan man. He was shipping all spirits and everything. But God chose to spoke to him about, about Egypt. Okay, so what was that dream? Seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. And he gave two dreams, right? One was about the seven fatted calf being eaten by the seven thin cattle. Then the other one was the corn, right? The plants which were healthy, being again eaten by the ones which were thin and not healthy. So he had the dream, he did not understand. So who gave the dream? Again, it, the dream was from God because Joseph interpreted the dream and he said, this is what God is saying. And he said, there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. So God, the Holy Spirit knows the weather conditions, knows what is in the future, and he chooses to communicate that to people. So here we see that Agabus, the prophet, um, uh, we read about him as the prophet later, uh, right? So uh, in the ministry of Paul, you know, we, we read about him again. But here we see that Agabus stood up, showed by the Holy Spirit that there's going to be a great famine in the land. And so the people prepared themselves they gave, uh, they, they gave relief, meaning maybe money, maybe, maybe food items to those who will be who are affected by the famine. Okay? So what do we learn from that about the Holy Spirit? What do we learn about the Holy Spirit? So that's the important thing. All these verses, we are learning something about the Holy Spirit. So what do we learn? What do we learn about the Holy Spirit? Okay, Holy Spirit knows the future. Why does he know the future? Because he is God. He's omniscient, okay, all-knowing. Yeah, then? He knows about the future. 
and he chooses to reveal the future. It's not like saying, I know the future, I'll keep, the, keep that information to myself. He chooses to reveal because this is going to impact the people. right? And how does he reveal? Through another believer, through another person who believes in Jesus. right? So that's what it says um, about Agabus. Okay. Then let's move on to Acts 13. Okay, Acts 13, we learn one more thing about the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 13, let's read verses 1 to 4. Okay. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So, what is happening here? What is the place called? Antioch. And what is happening there? There is a group of believers. The Bible says that there were prophets and teachers. It lists down the names. Okay, so Barnabas is there. Saul is also there. Okay, now what were they doing? What do they do? Just read through the verse. What did they do? Verse two. They, they ministered to the Lord, they were fasting, which means, and they prayed, they worshiped, they were in, you know, in a season of fasting and prayer, right? That's what they did, did. Now, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, what happened? The Holy Spirit said something. Yeah, the Holy Spirit spoke, right? And what did the Holy Spirit say? What information was it? Yeah, so it was a very specific information, instruction rather, that Barnabas and Saul had to be sent out on a mission, right? Separate to me, Barnabas and Saul, to the work for which I have called them. Okay, so the work of ministry is something that God calls us. We understand that. And the Holy Spirit is the one who instructs or commissions or sends out. Okay? So he says, you separate these two people to the work that I have for them. Okay? And the thing is, how many people are listed there? It says there were certain prophets and teachers. How many people do we see there? Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manaean, Saul. At least five are there. Five are mentioned by name, right? I'm sure there could be others also. Right? So they were praying, they were ministering, and they all seem to have the same instruction. So that's the thing, right? He spoke to them, all those who were praying, all those who were fasting. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. You separate these two people for the work that I am sending them. Okay? So that is also something that we understand that we learn okay the holy spirit is able to give the same message same instruction to not only one person but to a group so they all understood it says there um, that if he spoke to them now separate to me so having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them they sent them away okay so which means that they heard the same message they said okay this is what god has spoken so you guys need to go so they laid hands on them prayed on them and they sent them away. And that is what we come to uh, learn as Paul's first missionary journey. Okay, the first time he goes on a mission, missionary journey, he does some three missionary journeys. So this is the first time he goes on a mission uh, journey and he goes to Seleucia, he goes to Cyprus and so on. And uh, he's preaching the gospel where people have not heard the gospel. Okay, he's going to all, all these places and he's ministering. Okay, so something, how can we reapply this in our lives? This truth, how can we apply it in our lives? What do you think? 
is something that we learn about God, about Holy Spirit. But for us, does it make a difference? How can we apply this truth? Yeah. Sorry, uh, forget your name. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Hey, not with the one of the young. What is your name? Sagar. Okay. So, how do we apply this? How would you apply it? This truth for your life. Yeah. So, so what we understand is the Holy Spirit knows what the need is when it comes to ministry. What kind of ministry? What each person can do? Where people? Each person. So, see, all of them are prophets and teachers, but he wanted these two to go. What about the others? Right. He wanted them to stay and do the work there. He might have had other plans for them. So, God has plans for us. God wants to communicate that plan to us. Okay, he's not saying, I have a plan. I'm not going to tell you what the plan is. No. right? They were fasting. They were praying. God, Holy Spirit will tell us what the plan is. And when we actually follow, obey the plan, obey the instruction, we will. that is when ministry happens. That is when we see the fruit of ministry as well. Okay. So when we when we go through, we see that okay, just because Holy Spirit has said, that doesn't mean everything is easy. When we go through, when we see the missionary journey, we see that uh, there were certain difficulties, there were challenges, there were dangers, but Holy Spirit was leading them, guiding them to all these places. Okay. So that is how you know this applies to us. This truth applies to us, right? Okay. Let's look at. Um, Verse 9, chapter 13, okay, Acts chapter 13, verse 9. Okay. So this is the first place they go to. Through Seleucia, they go to um, Cyprus. Then they arrive at this place called Salamis in Cyprus. They preach the gospel in the synagogue to the Jews. And, uh, and they go there. And they go to this place called Perphos. And uh, there is a, you know, again, there they also meet a fall, certain sorcerer, a false prophet. Uh, he was actually a Jew. And then they also meet with this uh, government official. He's called a proconsul. His name is Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. So he wanted to call, Bar call Saul and Barnabas, and he wanted to hear about God. So then Saul, um, so this, yeah, so the, uh, the verse before that, verse 8, if you see, he withstood them, this sorcerer, he actually resisted them. We don't know what he did. Probably he was calling on the powers of darkness, whatever. He was trying to resist. He was trying to, you know, he was trying to make sure that this government official does not hear the gospel from Paul and Saul and Paul and Barabbas, right? So it says he withstood them. So we see in verse 9, Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? Now, he is described as a false prophet, which means that he pretended to be a spokesperson for God, but his, whatever he did, whatever he said was just for his benefit. Right? It was not, he just not, did, was, he didn't care about God's heart or God's will, but he was more concerned about him, himself, right? And he did not want this message about Jesus to be heard by this government official. So he withstood them. So Paul, by the Holy Spirit, he pronounces certain things. Okay, by the Holy Spirit, he has this discernment. He says, "You are all this. You are enemy of all righteousness. Un, uh, enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease to pervert the straight ways of the Lord?" 
and he says the hand of the Lord is upon you and you will not be you will lose your eyesight for some time he says you will go blind you will not see the Sun for a time meaning for some time you will not be able to see okay, you're not going to have vision and immediately it says the dark mist fell on him and he went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand okay now it was of course something very harsh for this person he was trying to pervert the way of the Lord he was a false prophet okay. so, so he receives this harsh judgment um, and it says Paul Paul mentions the hand of the Lord is upon you so the spirit of the Lord is bringing upon you know he's intervening and bringing upon a strong a judgment upon this person okay then what happens now this pro consul this government official was invited them he sees this happening he sees this whole thing right before his eyes and it says here in verse 12 then the pro consul believed when he saw what had been done being astonished at the teaching of the Lord so even this was something that God used to draw this person to himself he saw this and he said he's astonished wow this is the power of God and he believed in Jesus he astonished at the teaching of the Lord okay then we go on to the last very last verse which has a reference about the Holy Spirit okay it says the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit So why were they filled with joy and the Holy Spirit? Can anyone tell me? You can read and tell me. Okay, we're looking at verse 52. It says they were filled. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at some of these things. Uh, Gertrude, Sanjay, thank you. I see your comments, yeah. Okay, so they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with joy. Yes? So what happened before that? What happened before that? Just read the few verses before that. What does it say? Verse 50, verse 49, verse 50, verse 51. What does it say? What do you read? Nonsang? Persecution of disciples. Exactly. So here we see that they are ministering the word. You no, know, word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. Verse 49. Okay. Verse 50. The Jews stirred up the prominent people, prominent women, and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas. Now, Paul and Barnabas are traveling, they're ministering, you know, the missionary journey is still happening. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. Right? Does it make sense? For the, you know, for us. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Here, they're being persecuted. They are, you know, thrown out of the city and saying, you know, just get out of this place. Don't come back. Right? And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, which means that they knew that they were in the will of God. And all this was happening because of the sake of the gospel. Right? And they were being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. And it says here that they were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So here was something supernatural that was happening in the midst of all these difficulties and challenges. Right? So God, the Holy Spirit was filling them with power, filling them with joy in the midst of all that was happening around. Okay. So uh, we will see, you know, in Acts chapter 16, we will see a similar thing happening there, right? So we see that uh, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of challenges, the Holy Spirit strengthens us. 
the Holy Spirit comforts us. He is called the comforter, right? He is the helper. So Holy Spirit helps us, comforts us. And we see that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with joy. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, Acts chapter 15. Okay, Acts chapter 15, verse 8. We're not going to, going to spend so, too much time here. Uh, it says, God who knows the heart acknowledged them by giving the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. Now, Acts chapter uh, 15 and verse 8 talks about, uh, uh, you know, everybody coming together and uh, they were talking about some of these, you know, churches, people who had come to receive Christ. Now, there were certain Jewish people who had come to tell them, um, all these churches, they had come and uh, they had told them that, um, you know, you need to follow um, the law. You need to be circumcised um, according to Moses. According to Moses' law, you need to be circumcised, etc. So um, they came to tell them that. So uh, people are gathered in order to... Um, just a minute, I'm just... Uh, Sorry, I realize that I'm not um, projecting the notes. Just give me a minute. Okay. 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 So um, we are looking at this 15. Yeah, chapter 15. So chapter 15, verse 8, you know, so there are certain people who came from Judea and they go to some of these churches and they're saying, you need to follow Moses, you need to be circumcised, you need to keep the law, and only then you are saved. Yes, you believed in Jesus, but you have to do all this. So uh, so the what is called as a Jerusalem council, so the people get together, all these apostles, you know, they all get together, elders, to consider, you know, what is this? Is it okay to do it? So we are Jews, right? They are Gentiles. They are non-Jews. Now they have accepted Jesus. You know, is it is it right to say this or is it wrong? So they consider this. They and then verse eight it says, um, "So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving the Holy Spirit, just as He did to us." Now these are Gentiles. They are not Jews. Now, God, they believed in Jesus, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, right? And then, verse 28, they come to this conclusion. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. So they come to this conclusion after this discussion and prayer and consulting with the Holy Spirit. What is the conclusion that, you know, we're not going to lay these burden. We're not going to say that you need to do all these things. Right? It seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit, which means it was in consultation with the Spirit of God, in prayer, in seeking God and saying, Lord, what, is, what do you say about this? Right? So they consulted. And it was a church matter. It was a matter of laying down instructions for these new believers. So they consulted the Lord. And uh, it says it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so which means that God, you know, approved of the decision. Right. So the same Holy Spirit who actually instructed Paul and Barnabas to go on these missions, who gave that same information to all the elders or prophets and teachers who were there in Antioch, the same Holy Spirit here, uh, you know, uh, like. Here it says, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit, which means that the Holy Spirit's approval, he communicated to these people. Okay, So Holy Spirit approved of this. He communicated this. He shared this in their hearts. They knew this. right? So that's something that, again, we need to, uh, we need to learn and we need to put to practice. You know, What does God say? What is the Holy Spirit? Does the Holy Spirit approve of this? Okay. So these are matters of church governance. These are matters of ministry. They consulted the Lord. Okay, let's go on to Acts chapter 16. Okay, is everybody feeling tired? Yes or no? 
we are traveling all the way from Jerusalem, Antioch. Nobody's feeling tired. It's okay. So we've come to uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 6. It says, Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Okay. See, now, does God want the gospel to be preached everywhere? Yes or no? Yes. Now, what is this? If we see here, they had come to this region. It says they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit, which means that the Holy Spirit says, don't go into this region. Don't share the gospel here. Okay, let's read through. Verse 7, after they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them twice. Right? So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul, and so on. So the first thing that we see is that the Holy Spirit actually told them not to go in a certain area at that particular time to preach the gospel. Okay. So it's a very important lesson for us that we need to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. See, one thing we need to understand, is sometimes it is our own flesh, our own fear, or our own discomfort, because of which we don't go somewhere or we don't preach the gospel. Okay, our own fear, what will they think? What will they do? What will they do to me? Right? Or our own sense of discomfort, meaning hey, it's not very comfortable for me to go there. No, it's I have to journey like this, I have to stay here, and it's not comfortable for me. I'm comfortable where I am, right? So sometimes it is that because of which we may not venture out, right? We may not go and do what God wants us to do. But here, here's a specific instruction that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. Now they are on a missionary journey, right? Their, their focus is. I need to preach the gospel. Wherever I'm going, I'm preaching the gospel. Here it says they were forbidden not to go into a certain territory, okay, um, Phrygia and the region, um, to preach the word in Asia. Now they tried to go into Bithynia, the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by this, they come to this place called Troas. Verse 9 And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with them, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Okay. So God knows what is happening in that place. God knows what is in the future, what is in store. So much as it is the plan of God that every place should receive the gospel, but God has specific plans as to the timing, the people, who should take, who should do what, right? So we can trust. Now, we don't have much information why, right? Why were they forbidden? But God knows best, right? So he did not permit, he forbid them. Um, but at the same time, there is this vision in which he uh, sees the man who's pleading and saying, come to Macedonia, come to us. And then they all decided, yes, God is actually giving the green signal there. He, he did not allow us to go here, but he's allowing or showing us that we need to go to this place. Right? So they go there and they preach the gospel there. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's go to accept... Uh, 18. Okay, Acts chapter 16 is very interesting because they go there. Uh, it says that, um, um, you know, uh, we, they, from there they go to Philippi, right? Acts chapter 16, verse 11. And uh, it's in Philippi where they have that whole experience of being jailed. They are in prison and then supernatural things happen, right? They are singing there and so on. Right? So they are strengthened, comforted by the Holy Spirit that night, even though they were in a difficult position, they were, you know, they were ministered to by the Holy Spirit. They sang hymns, uh, they were praying and singing hymns to God. Okay. Um, okay, let's go to Acts chapter 18. Okay, Acts 18. 
and verse 5. Acts chapter 18 and verse 5 says, When Silas and Timothy, now this is their second missionary journey, when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Okay? So, verse 6, if you see, they opposed and blasphemed. Okay. So it's not like, see, it says Paul was compelled by the Holy Spirit. Okay. It was like, what does compel mean? Compelled by the Spirit. Huh? Sorry, sir. Ah, tell me. Doom. Doom. Okay. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. No, compelled actually means that uh, the Holy Spirit is literally, you know, to the point of forcing. Okay, you must do this. So he's putting that weight on Paul's heart. You know. He's compelled by the Spirit. So suppose I say, you know, you must do this. Now, of course, you have the choice whether to obey or not, but the Holy Spirit is putting that burden, okay, putting that weight, right? So it says here that they were compelled. Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Lord. Okay, so he felt that burden. I need to tell these Jews. The verse 6, if you see, they opposed him and blasphemed him. Okay, now God wants to give everybody an opportunity to hear. Okay, that is what we see. Irrespective of what the response is, now the Holy Spirit wants Paul to share the gospel to these Jews. No, so the response is not good. They opposed him, they blasphemed, they he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon you. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. He departed from there and uh, and went from there. But the thing is, he did this. He did what was told by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's something that we see here. Okay. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Um, this is okay. Lucy guided. It's 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 a stronger word than guided, right? Um, it is uh, feeling the weight, that prompt, that heaviness, right? It's um, it's it's a little stronger than being guided. Okay. Okay. So let's look at Acts chapter 19. We're almost at the end of. Uh, you know, uh, the book of Acts. So Acts chapter 19, it says, uh, it talks about um, uh, Paul's encounter. He meets a few disciples in Ephesus, this place called Ephesus. Okay, So Acts chapter 19, it says, Apollos was at Corinth, Paul comes to Ephesus. So he meets these disciples. Okay, verse 2. Acts 19, verse 2. First thing that he asks is, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Okay, Strange question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So these were disciples. So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Okay, Strange question and even strange answer. Right? Why? Because now they are following Jesus, the disciples of the Lord, but they are not, you know, they have not been taught. They are untaught in the ways of the Lord or in the truth. Right? So they say, we have not heard about the Holy Spirit. Okay, And then he asks, what kind of baptism did you have? John's baptism. John used to baptize us for repentance. Same, John's baptism. So now Paul says, yeah, John indeed baptized you, but then, you know, uh, but you should believe on him that who would come after him that is on Christ. So then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay. Verse 6, And when Paul had laid hands on him, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay. Again, we see there were about 12 people um, in Ephesus, already following Jesus. It says they were disciples, followers of the Lord. 
but they did not have a full understanding of the truth. So they did not have an understanding of the Holy Spirit. Okay, they have not even heard about the Holy Spirit. So Peter, I mean, sorry, Paul baptizes them in water in the name of Jesus. And then he lays hands on them. So now who laid hands on Paul? Who did something like that for Paul? Who laid hands on Paul? Ananias, right? Ananias did that. Ananias, see, he's a new believer. Paul is just sitting there. He's helpless because he can't see also. But this is the instruction. He's a new believer. Ananias comes and he says, you know, God has sent me to lay hands on you, to pray for you, that you might receive your vision and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So obviously, Paul is also doing the same thing. Now he's a believer. He's going about. So the first question he asks is, did you receive the Holy Spirit? when you believe. Okay. And get them water baptized, all those things are clarified. Then he lays hands on them. Same thing, you know, what was done to him, he does to others. So we can, we, we can understand that this was something that the early church did. They prayed for others to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So he says here, they spoke with, new, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay. So they spoke with tongues. And here we see that they also prophesied. Okay, so they spoke as inspired by the Holy Spirit. Maybe there was something about the future. All that happened. Okay, so um, so we see that Acts chapter twenty and um, Acts chapter twenty verse twenty-two. It says, um, oh, "This is, these are the words of Paul, and he's saying." Uh, now I go bound in this in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await, await me. So the Holy Spirit was actually telling Paul, oh, no, Paul, you know, this is what was going to happen. You will be put in prison. You will go through a difficult season, and it is for the sake of the gospel. Okay. Um, and the Holy Spirit was sharing this or speaking this and communicating this to Paul. Okay. Now, if you if you actually look at Acts chapter nine, okay, Acts chapter nine, what does the Lord tell Ananias? Acts chapter nine. Okay. What does the Lord's a Lord uh, tell Ananias about Paul? Verse 11, verse 12, verse 15, right? These are the words with, of Jesus to Ananias. Look at verse 15. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Okay? So which means that it, it is a ministry is going to be there before kings, he's going to be sharing the gospel before Gentiles, non-Jewish people, he's going to be sharing the gospel before Jews, and I will show him that it's not going to be difficult, it's not going to be easy. And there will be some imprisonments, there will be some, uh, you know, some difficult times, tribulations. So here, Paul says, Holy Spirit testifies that in every city, Chains and tribulations await me. Okay, so, so that thing has not changed. Like Paul told, uh, God told Ananias, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is testifying to him. And in fact, uh, preempting, it's not a surprise for Paul when he's, you know, when he's prison, when he's in prison, it's not a surprise for him. It has already been spoken to him by the Holy Spirit that he should go there. So, which means that Paul went into those situations knowing that these things can happen or these things will happen right but despite that in spite of that he said i must share the gospel i must go there share the gospel right amazing right okay then um let's look at 
chapter 20 and verse 28. Um, 28, it's uh, again the words that the, the Paul instructs the, ch the, the Ephesian church. Okay, these are the Ephesian elders who are there. So he's speaking to them. He says, um, verse 27, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Was there any questions? Sorry, I heard something. Somebody unmuted your mic. Um, okay. Okay. So, so this is the instruction which you know Paul gives the efficient elders. They have come to visit, and this is the last time he's going to actually meet them. After that, you know, he'll be imprisoned, he'll be executed, and and all that. So he's the last time. So he's giving some important instruction to the church, and he said, "Take heed to yourself," which means be careful how you live your life. You know. Be careful, take heed to yourselves and to the flock among whom, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Right? So we saw the Holy Spirit actually directing, strategizing, and commissioning Paul and Barnabas on mission. Right? We see that. And to your Acts chapter 13, they were praying, ministering, fasting. Holy Spirit spoke, send them. So the Holy Spirit. Is the one who who is actually appointing. You now he says, the Holy Spirit has made you overseer, meaning a spiritual leader, and to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Gertrude. Can you can you be a little louder, please? You, you said something I could I couldn't hear. Uh, sorry, Pastor. I didn't un unmute my mic. Okay. Oh, you didn't mute your mic. Okay, fine. Right. Okay. So 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 these are some things that we. Uh, So it's it's so we can't say see the Holy Spirit has made us overseers. Okay, fine. So it's not uh, it's not my own decision. It's not somebody's decision. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us overseers. Now he might use and he will use other people to affirm that to maybe appoint all that would happen. But the Holy Spirit decides, right? The second thing that we see is that what we learn here is that. You shepherd the church of God. Okay, so saying this church is not your church or my church, but it's the church of God. So it means the church belongs to Him. The church, is it a building? What is the church? Huh? People. Right? So the church is not the building, it's the people. So what is what is Paul saying? You know, shepherd the flock of God, let's shepherd the church of God, shepherd the people of God. Okay, so people who belong to God, they don't belong to you for you to use, for you to abuse, for you to, you know, they belong to God. And he has purchased, Jesus has purchased with his own. Okay, so very important truth, right? So shepherd the church of God. Um, and the Holy Spirit has made you or appointed you as overseer. Okay, okay let's look at one more verse. Uh, last few verses. It says, uh, Acts 21, verse 4, And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit not to go to Jerusalem. Okay, so now, you know, Paul... Even the disciples, they've been seeking the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is telling them, this is what awaits Paul. If he goes to Jerusalem, 
there's going to be imprisonment there's going to be some difficult times so so here disciples also got the same information from whom from the holy spirit so they told paul through the spirit hey, don't go because this is what is happening okay uh, but Paul goes nevertheless because he knew he knows that that is his mission. Right? That is his mission. Okay, verse ten. We sta stayed there many days. A certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Where do we read about Ag Agabus earlier on? Right uh, after in the in, in the in uh, the um, when, with regard to Barnabas, right? We regard uh, immediately after Barnabas is introduced, we read about uh, Agabus. Okay, um, this, is, this is in Acts chapter. Uh, is it eleven? Yeah, eleven. So we read about Agabus here also. So it says here a certain prophet named Agabus. So first time he prophesied about. What did he prophesy about? First time we read about him. We just read now. What did he say? OK, everybody turn to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, verse 27 onwards, can you tell me? Yeah, Lucy, I see your comment. What did Agabus prophesy? Exactly. Right? The first time when you read about Agabus, we see that he actually prophesied, saying there's going to be a famine in the land. And he spoke this, we read, it says, by the Holy Spirit, okay? which means as inspired, as information received from the Holy Spirit, he spoke. Okay? So here also we read about Agabus, and it says that a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea, and we had, verse 11, when he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, thus says the Holy Spirit, Shows, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hand of the Gentiles. So he's communicating a message uh, by the Holy Spirit again. He says, so says the Holy Spirit. This is how this person will be bound, etc., um, and so on. So we see that. Well, Paul continues on, right? He is. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he knows. Okay, this is what has been told him. He knows the earlier disciples also told him the same thing, and he knows that this prophet is also saying the same thing, same message, and uh, so he knows that. Okay, this is what is waiting. So he continues to go. But the fact is that the Holy Spirit gives the same message through different people. Ananias, these disciples or efficient elders, same message. Through the prophet Agabus, same message. Right. So Paul understood that, yes, all this is coming from the Holy Spirit. But the fact is that he is with me in this mission, so I need to go. Despite the persecution, despite the imprisonment, I need to go. So the others receiving, they were out of their good intentions, they were saying, hey, I don't think you should go. Right? The disciples, earlier disciples, they liked Paul. You know, he had taught them. So he said, you, know, you should not go there. Because you know, the Spirit of God is saying that there's a lot of things waiting for you. Paul goes nevertheless. Okay, So, um, so we come to the end of the book of Acts. So we see that all these things uh, mentioned in the book of Acts and uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. So next class. We will uh, talk about um, the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the um, sinner and so on, right? Okay. Okay, thank you. God bless.